All right, so in this video, we're going to review how to predict the weather, part of chapter 8, sections 3. In your notes, you should have the following things. Pause if you want to read it. So when dealing with the weather, we have two major types of air that we have to encounter. We have high pressure systems, right, which are known in the textbook and by meteorologists as anticyclones. And we know that they bring cool, dry, clear weather to whatever area they're over. So in a high pressure system, you can see in this animation, the air is blowing outward from the high, okay, which is pushing all the different types of air away from it. And the end result is that the system kind of pushes air away, leaving one type of air behind, and that air is coming from down up on high in the atmosphere, and that air is uh, cool and dry. Now, on the other hand, a low pressure system, which meteorologists would call a cyclone, it pulls in different air from all different uh, areas around it. Some of that air will be warm, some of that air will be cold, some of that air will be humid or dry. And when those different types of air meet at the center, you have all sorts of different types of storms and disturbances that form. So the low drags air in together because that air gets pulled along the surface and then floats upward higher into the atmosphere. So when you see a low, you're going to think about changing weather and there will be storms and clouds. So for your notes, make sure you have this information. Uh, these are the major facts, right? Low pressures are called cyclones. The wind blows inward in a counterclockwise direction and the weather is unstable. High pressures are anticyclones, outward, in a clockwise direction, and they bring stable weather. There's the same thing in a nice chart. You should have this in your notebook. So when we deal with those lows and highs, we're going to deal with the word front. Front is a word we use to describe air that's moving. And I give an image here of a bus. You're all familiar. Here's the front of the bus. Behind the front of the bus is the rest of the bus. And if I just gave you a picture of the front of a bus, you would assume that the, the rest of the school bus is behind it. And the same rule applies for air. When two air meet, two different types of air meet on, in, on the ground. In this example, we have cold air is meeting warm air. When they meet, this line would represent the front edge of that cold air. So all this air is moving across. Here's the front of it. And that's why we give this line on the map, we call it a cold front, right? Because that's the front of the cold air. Right? Here's the same idea drawn in a different way. So cold air is moving in. On the map, the cold front would be drawn right here. And as this air pushes forward, right, this is the front of it. So this gets called and labeled a cold front. Now that warm air, as it collides with the cold air, gets forced to rise higher. And as it rises higher, the rule is anytime air goes up, clouds and rain come down. So we have all these clouds being formed right up high over the cold air, and rain will fall down through it. Okay, shown here is the little dotted lines. Right? And here's an animation showing you the same uh, the same idea. So if we can play this you'll see that the cold air is moving in and it pushes the warmer up on top and the rain falls down in front of it. So here's the exact opposite idea. Warm air is now moving into place and as the warmer hits the cold air, the warmer gets pushed up on top of the cold air, the warmer rises, so clouds begin to form and the rain will fall down under the clouds. On a map, drawn like this. A red line or a black line with little half circles. Here's the same idea. Warm air pushes into a location, and as it pushes forward, that air gets forced to go up over the cold air. Clouds form, rain falls down. This is where it's drawn on the map. This is where the warm front will be drawn. 
Now, in an occluded front, things get a little more interesting. So imagine that cold front, sorry, imagine that cold front pushing in is able to push all the warm air above it. That leads us to what's known as an occluded front. All the warm air is being forced off the ground. You can see there's a, there's a gap here. There's no warm air remaining on the ground anymore. And the end result is that huge amounts of air get pushed up higher. Big, long areas of rain will form. And on the map, we'll draw that occluded front either as a purple line on some maps or a line with both uh, circles and triangles. This is another image showing the same idea. Cold air is pushed in so far that it's caught up to another batch of cold air, also moving in the same direction, just a little slower, and all the warm air is being pushed up high into the atmosphere. Okay, to show you the occluded front, we can look at this. I'd recommend playing this over several times until you can understand what's happening. Okay, you should be able to identify that this is a cold front because the cold air is doing the moving. Warm front looks like this. Similar except now the warm air is doing the moving. You can see on this the warm air symbols, the warm front symbols are drawn. And we can see anytime the air gets pushed higher, clouds form and rain follows. So overall, the leading edge of an air mass are, is called a front. Fronts are named for the air that is moving. So cold fronts are called because their cold air is moving forward. And fronts are created at the areas of low pressure. Hope this quick video was helpful. I'll see you in class.